What I've got here is a selection of SD cards. I've got a couple of UHS Type 1 cards and a couple of UHS Type 2. And I'm going to speed test them on the laptop using this SanDisk Type 2 card reader. And afterwards I'm going to try them in the Panasonic G9 camera just to see how they perform in a real world scenario. Now I featured this uh, SanDisk card reader in another video and I bought it because I'd heard that your card reader can make a big difference to the speeds that you actually get from your SD cards. And despite this being a Type 2 reader, I'd heard that it also offers a speed improvement on Type 1 cards. So I did some somewhat less than scientific tests and what I found is, yes, card reader performance varies quite a lot. This SanDisk, for example, offered better performance than the internal reader on my iMac, but I never saw any evidence that it offers a speed improvement for Type 1 cards. So what I've done is I've bought a couple of Type 2 cards and in the process of doing the shopping, I discovered that card labeling can be quite confusing. Uh, so I had to give myself a bit of a primer on card speed standards. So let me share that with you and then we'll have a look at how these cards stack up. Now there are a number of different marks that you'll see on the packaging and on the card itself. And they are either UHS Type 1 or Type 2. Now that's indicated by the Roman numeral I or two I's on the packaging. Type 2 cards are a newer generation and if you look at the underside of the card, what you'll see is that Type 2 cards have more metal contacts than a Type 1 card. Now your cards will also usually show a speed class figure, and this is a number written inside a C. C10 is quite common. Now this would indicate that the card can support a write speed of 10 megabytes per second. This gets a little bit confusing because they still put that C10 mark on cards that have much higher write speeds. So you have to remember it's just a minimum speed. Now the cards will also show a UHS speed class. This is normally a number one or a number three inside a U on the card. And again, this refers to the minimum sequential write speed of the card. U1 is the same as C10, 10 megabytes per second. U3 is 30 megabytes per second. And finally, you'll also see a V number. That's the video speed class. Again, the number refers to the minimum write speed in megabytes per second. So a V10 is the same as C10, which is the same as U1. And V30 is the same as U3. A V30 card is 30 megabytes per second. Newer Type 2 cards might also have V60 or V90. Now these are the really important figures, no matter what the manufacturer claims the speed of the card is. And when you see the manufacturer's speed numbers, what they're talking about is a burst of reading activity, not a sustained write speed. Something else to bear in mind is that video bit rates are usually expressed in megabits per second, not megabytes. There are eight bits in a byte, so there are eight megabits in a megabyte. So if you have a V30 card, it has a minimum write speed of 30 megabytes per second. Well, 30 times eight is 240. So you can support a video bit rate of 240 megabits per second. Now, if we take this Panasonic G9 as an example, the highest bit rate on this camera for 4K video is 150 megabits per second. So a U3 card or a V30 card is plenty fast enough. In fact, you only really need to venture into these Type 2 cards if you're shooting 4K in RAW format or you're shooting 8K video. This G9 doesn't support either of those formats, and yet it does have Type 2 card slots. Why is that? Well, the G9 is primarily a photography camera. And in photography, being able to shoot rapid fire photos without the camera getting bogged down buffering those files, well, that's probably gonna be important to you, depending on the type of photography you're interested in. But the quicker the camera can write to the card, the quicker it can be ready for the next shot. And that's what I'd like to test a little bit later with these cards. So let's have a look at the cards that we have. So the first card that we're going to be looking at is a SanDisk Type 1 Extreme Pro. Now the manufacturer claims a 95 megabytes per second peak performance out of this card, but it's actually only a V30 card. Uh, next we have another SanDisk Type 1 card, and it has all the same markings as this card, but this one claims 170 megabytes per second when used with SanDisk's card reader. Now I mentioned earlier that I'd heard the SanDisk reader offers performance benefits with Type 1 cards, and I wonder if this is the card that you need for that. We'll find out. The next card I have is interesting. It's a Lexar Type 2 card, but it's only rated at V30. 
and the manufacturer speed claim on it is 150 megabytes per second, less than this one. So does that mean that a Type 2 card can be slower than a Type 1 card? Again, we'll find out. Finally, we've got this Transcend Type 2 card, and this is rated at V90, and the manufacturer claim speed is 285 megabytes per second. So to do the test on the computer, we're gonna be using the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test software. Now I do appreciate that this isn't quite like a real world usage case for an SD card, but it will give us what we need for this test to help us decide where these cards fit in terms of performance. So let's start the test. I'll just plug in the reader and I've got the uh, speed test software uh, set to one gigabyte stress test. So let's just pop the card in and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so uh, Sandisk claimed that this card can run at 95 megabytes per second. What we actually saw was somewhat less than that. Uh, it got just over 60 megabytes per second on write performance, which of course places it well ahead of the V30 or U3 speed requirement. And on read speeds, we're getting about 88 megabytes per second. So a little way shorter than 95, but still a good performing card. And for the most part, it's difficult to imagine you'd ever need more than this card for basic uh, video recording on these types of cameras. Now I'm intrigued by this card. This uh, apparently is the same card, but somehow it gets an extra speed boost up to 170 megabytes per second. Uh, let's test that claim. Now, I do like it when you get a, a case with your SD card. Um, so side by side, the, the cards look pretty much identical. It's just that speed claim that's different. And it is still a Type 1 card. Now let's pop it in and see how we go. So uh, it, the write speed is 80 megabytes per second and the read speed, okay, slightly quicker than this one at 91, but still nowhere near 170 megabytes per second. So I don't know what you've got to do to get that kind of speed out of the card. Uh, perhaps that was to be expected. Uh, let's have a look at this Lexar card. Nice, easy packaging to open. Now you can see this is a Type 2 card. You see it's got the extra, extra pins on the back when compared to a, a standard card. So let's see how this one performs. Well, I don't think much of the Lexar performance. Um, I think this is a Type 2 card in, uh, that's been deliberately crippled. Um, the write speed is lower than these SanDisk cards, so we're getting about 42, 43 megabytes per second. Uh, although in fairness, it, it says it's a V30 card and it's performing well ahead of V30 standard. Um, where it does perform well is on the read uh, speed, so we're getting 127 plus uh, megabytes per second out of this. Now, I think this card actually has a use, um, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a little bit. Now, let's go on to the fourth card. This one should be really impressive, uh, because this is the full Type 2 card. I, I don't have any experience with Transcend as a brand. Um, I certainly had Lexar before and been unimpressed with it. Um, usually I, I choose SanDisk, uh, but the SanDisk Type 2 cards are extremely expensive, so for the purpose of... Uh, of doing this video, I kept it cheap and cheerful. So let's see how the Transcend does. Well, nothing to fault with the performance there. Uh, so we're getting 137 megabytes per second on write and we're getting 226 megabytes per second on read. This is a properly quick card and that's, that's really what you'd expect from a Type 2 card, uh, real performance. So from the first part of our test, we were able to draw some conclusions. Uh, first of all, the, the basic SanDisk Extreme Pro, these are good quality cards, they're very reliable, I've never had one fail, and they're fast enough for most people and what they're gonna be doing. Great for photography, great for shooting 4K video on something like a G9 or a GH5, that kind of camera. Um, I don't think I would recommend going for these supposedly 170 megabytes per second cards. Uh, I think that's snake oil. There's, there doesn't seem to be any difference between the two cards there. Uh, maybe I need to do a bit more testing on that.
this Lexar card is interesting. Um, it's a Type 2 card that doesn't really offer Type 2 performance, except when you're uh, offloading files onto the computer, then it is quite quick. So I think the market for this card is actually for people who have cameras with Type 1 card slots. You see, Type 2 cards are backwards compatible, so if you put this into your camera with a Type 1 slot, it's going to perform perfectly fine. It's a V30 card, it'll be, it'll be great. But when you come to offload your footage onto your computer, whether you're offloading photos or video, it's going to be much faster. So you get the speed boost at that point. Uh, when it comes to shooting uh, 4K raw footage or shooting 8K, or maybe if you need uh, you know, extreme photography performance, then go for a full Type 2 card. But I imagine if you're shooting that kind of footage, you're probably not going to cheap out like I did and get this Transcend card. You're probably going to go for something from a more reliable and well-known brand name. So I thought another interesting test we could do is just to pop these cards into the camera, put it on rapid fire shooting and see how many RAW plus JPEG photos we can shoot before the camera clogs up. Okay, so we're going to start with the first SanDisk card and I'm just going to rapid fire the camera until it stops and then just see how many photos it manages to take. Quite a lot. That's going to take a long time to buffer. So the first SanDisk card managed 74 photos before the camera clogged up. Uh, let's try the other SanDisk card. I expect this will be absolutely no different because I think it's just the same card with a different label on. It does take a very long time to write these files uh, to the card, but in fairness, the camera is ready to be used again. Uh, so it can actually still take more photos whilst it's writing those others back to the card. And what I'd do is just pop this into the computer to find out how many photos were taken. Okay, so the second SanDisk card that's supposedly faster actually managed 69 photos before the camera jammed up. Uh, let's try this Lexar Type 2 card. And my expectation is, based on the testing we've already done, this, uh, that this will take even less photos. So the Lexar card managed exactly the same as that second SanDisk card, so 69 photos before the camera uh, started buffering. Let's try the Type 2 card. Now, will the card fill up first, or will my camera give up from all of the shutter actuations? Let's find out. Now I can see the, how quickly the camera is writing to this card. It's much, much quicker. So this Transcend Type 2 card managed just a bit more than the Type 1 cards. It did 79 photos before the camera started buffering. But interestingly, the camera uh, cleared that buffer so much faster with this card than it did with the others. And in a real world situation, if you're taking wildlife or action photography, then that's going to mean a lot to you. So a faster card can be very useful for photography and video. So what have we learned from our testing with these SD cards? Well, there are lots of different cards on the market. There's lots of confusing labeling and different speed ratings. And manufacturers make all sorts of claims that uh, as far as I can see, are largely unsubstantiated. Uh, and we need to recognize as well that the testing that we've done uh, just doesn't really represent an accurate real-world test. Uh, the size of your files will vary depending on what you're taking photographs of or what you're videoing. So uh, your mileage may vary when you try these different cards. But hopefully you found something of use in there. Uh, if you're using a camera like the G9 and you need to do um, you need that faster performance, then a Type 2 card is probably the way to go. But if your camera doesn't support those Type 2 cards, I don't think you've got anything to worry about at all. And there's an interesting sort of hybrid option there in that you can buy a Type 2 card, use it in your Type 1 camera, but get some faster speeds when you offload onto your computer. So I hope you found all of that useful. If you did, please consider hitting that like button down there. And why not subscribe to the channel? And I'll see you next time for some more geekery.